there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to investing, which is why I'm here to debunk five of the biggest investing myths. And watch to the very end because the last myth is something that I see a lot of beginner investors struggling with. So let's go. The first myth is that you need to be rich or have a lot of money in order to get started. Now this may have been true in the past, but today this is no longer accurate. You do not need to have thousands or even hundreds of dollars in order to start investing. And this is mostly due to investment types like index funds. Index funds are a basket of securities that track a particular stock market index like the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones, for example. If you use the brokerage Fidelity, all of their index funds have a $0 investment minimum. So theoretically, you could start investing today, like right now, with just $1. Now obviously, just because you start investing with $1 doesn't mean that you continue investing $1 a month for the rest of your life. The point is to start small. And I know that everyone watching this video right now has at least $1. So you cannot use lack of wealth as an excuse to not be investing. And if you're confused about how to start, I have a video on my channel where I walk you through step-by-step -step how to invest in Fidelity index funds, and that will be linked in the description box below. The next myth about investing is that it is just too risky. Many people fear that putting their money into the stock market will actually lead to their financial ruin and that they will not be able to see any gains on the returns that they put in over time. Now, this would be accurate, say, if you invested in just one company and then that company happened to fail. So yes, in that case, all of your money would be gone. But the thing about investing is that you are in control of the risk. You manage the risk. There are different levels to investment risk just depending on the investment types. So as an example, in general, bonds are a much less risky investment than stocks. The trade-off in general though, is that the less risk you are willing to take, the less reward that you will receive. And this is why it's a great idea to diversify your portfolio because you don't have to just invest all in stocks or all in bonds. It's definitely better to have a mix in your portfolio. So you can invest in ETFs or stocks that are more risky and then also have some bonds in there that are less risky to balance out your portfolio. The one thing I would say not to do for sure is to believe that you are better off saving instead of investing. Saving has its place and its purpose. I love saving and I talk about saving on my channel sometimes, but saving cannot outpace the rate of inflation. If you keep too much of your money in a savings account, then eventually your purchasing power of your money will decline over time. So instead of being afraid to invest, manage your risk properly. And you do not need a financial advisor in order to manage your risk. You do not have to be an expert in order to invest. I'm not knocking financial advisors, you know, you can use them if you want to, but I don't want you to feel like you have to use a financial advisor in order to start investing. Learning how to invest does not take lots and lots and lots of education. Investing can be as complicated as you want it to be. For example, if your investment strategy is to pick individual stocks, then yes, in that case, I will say it's gonna take you longer than it would if you're primarily looking to invest in index funds and ETFs. Because index funds and ETFs are already grouped together, that makes it a lot less work on your part to figure out what you want to invest in. And even Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time, recommends that the majority of people invest in low cost index funds. Making investing accessible to all people is the main reason I started this YouTube channel because you know, we mostly see men out here talking about finance, investing, dividends, ETFs, all of that stuff. But I wanna show up here as a young woman who has learned how to invest on my own and it can show you the best strategies so that you can feel comfortable doing it yourself. So if you are interested in more financial content, be sure to like this video and also subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications bell so you never miss an upload. The next ridiculous myth is that you need to monitor your investments daily. Not only is this a myth, but it's also just a terrible idea and a waste of your time. Tracking your investments can actually give you more anxiety and be more harmful than helpful. 
in the world of investing, there is a universal truth and that is your investment portfolio will go up and down. That is an absolute given. The important part is to remove the emotion out of investing. A common mistake that people make is panic selling their investments when the market dips. We should not be doing that because investing is a long-term game. It is not a get-rich-quick scheme. And that means that whatever is happening in the short term is not nearly as important as what will happen in the long term. History validates that markets do eventually rebound after downturns. There have been around 33 major recessions in the United States since 1854, and in 100% of those cases, the market not only rebounded, but also surpassed former market highs. This means that if you're selling when the market drops, then you're not actually doing yourself any favors. You're not benefiting from that. To give you some more wisdom from Warren Buffett, he once said, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy only when others are fearful. When the markets are down, you could say that stocks are on sale, so to speak, and you could use that opportunity to get into some new investments. And since we know that the markets have a history of rebounding, this works well with the common saying, buy low, sell high. The next myth is that you need to perfectly time the market. And this is a concept that I see a lot of beginners struggling with, so much so that they end up, some of them, not even investing at all. But the truth is that no one, no one, not even the most seasoned financial professionals know what will happen to the market and when. You will end up spending a lot of time and energy if you attempt to time the market. And going back to one of my earlier points, I think this could contribute to one of the reasons why people think investing is complicated and takes lots of time. Because if you are trying to time the market, then yes, that will be very complicated. But the better option is to just start investing right now, today, with what you have, and then invest for as long as you can. Now, if you're more cautious, you do not have to invest one lump sum of money all at one time. Say if you have $5,000 to invest, you don't have to invest all $5,000 on one day. You could use the dollar cost averaging strategy. And with this strategy, you would invest periodically, say $1,000 a month or any number that you're comfortable with until you have invested all 5,000. And the dollar cost averaging strategy will help to mitigate some of your risk. Now this is just a basic overview of the strategy. So if you want another video on full details on how to use the dollar cost averaging strategy, be sure to leave a comment below so that I know to make that video for you. I hope this video has cleared some things up for you. Now, if you're ready to start investing, the next step is to choose what exactly you're going to invest in because there are tons of options, but don't worry, I got you. Click the video on the screen for the top five Fidelity index funds to consider adding to your investment portfolio.